What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Austin Show. I'm back with more Star Wars Black Series figures and this time we have the Lucasfilm 50th Anniversary Archive Wave 4. And in this wave we got a Tusken Raider, an Imperial Death Trooper, an Imperial Hover Tank Pilot, and a Shore Trooper. So all these are cool looking but I feel this wave's a little bit let down because we just get a bunch of troopers that have come out before but we did miss out on a couple of these. And then the Tusken Raider is awesome because you don't see that every day. So that's awesome. So the rest of the troopers are all just kind of boring and they're a lot from Rogue One which is cool but they're just looks and everything aren't that exciting. So again it's another archive wave where it's a little bit disappointing to get a couple good figures but overall they're just a little bland and boring. So as I mentioned this is part of the Lucasfilm 50th anniversary so like on the back of the hover tank driver here we have the Lucasfilm 50 and then I have a timeline of a bunch of the movies especially the Star Wars on the back there so that's awesome there for the Lucasfilm 50th anniversary. So let me go ahead and get these figures open and we'll check them out together. So we're starting off with the Tusken Raider and this thing looks awesome. Now I have done this figure before in the past I can't remember when it was I want to say maybe with like the 40th anniversary wave so that was a couple years ago but uh, 3 to 1 but I don't know if I've done it since then or not but it looks awesome so we have the Tusken Raider head so Tusken Raiders are nomadic natives to Tatooine and they kind of travel around in the desert and they have body coverings from head to toe to kind of help protect them from the harshness of the heat and sand of the deserts of Tatooine so they have full body coverings so you can see it there like on his face he has the breather there on his mouth and everything to help from getting sand and everything goggle pieces covering the eyes and the nice cream color cloth completely covering the body and I like how they have it kind of like tucked up in here for the figure and stuff kind of help keep it off the feet so you can get it to stand up easier and even down at the feet you can see it completely wrapped up and everything in there and its hands are completely covered but we can move the robe out of the way and you can see his outfit underneath and I want to like take the outfit off but it's kind of like attached up here around the neck so you can't really take it off but you can kind of loosen it up and everything get it out from there because I think it looks much better like this where you can see it's under close so you can see his outfit on over the top and again a nice cream color has a nice texture to it and everything you can see there but when it's open you can see the bandoliers there around his chest his belt around the race with all sorts of pockets and you can see it has an under layer underneath as well with like a white cloth and under like the dress part here we can lift it up you can see it's got tan pants and the boots that go up to the knees again look all like wrappings very similar to how the face looks and then the arms as well it's hard to see because they do have to get attached on there and sewn around the arms so it's hard to be able to see the arms but you can see the gray gloves there and then the wrappings up the arms as well so for the movements its head can twist all the way around he can look pretty much <laughs> where it's at as far as it goes down mostly because it has the breather and stuff there so it kind of conflicts with each other and then it can look up a little bit so not a whole lot of range in the neck again because as this piece is all the way around its neck but the shoulders can come up to 90 degrees and can rotate around within there we do have an elbow joint I believe it's a single elbow joint that bends to like 90 degrees there and has some rotation but again it's hard to see up inside there and then we get the wrist that can twist around and flex back and forth and a bit of an ab crunch and twist right at the waist behind the pockets so we can crunch back and forth again just kind of rock back and forth there and can twist side to side and if we get the dress out of the way we can see the legs so the legs can come up to 90 degrees there out to the side that far we have a thigh twist all the way around we have a double knee joint that can bend up it's a little stiff but can bend up at least that far and then the foot that can rock back and forth and twist side to side so now with this I've got the cloth all undone so it's kind of out of the way so I think in the packaging they just kind of had it wrapped around the front and then just kind of take all the material and kind of shove it up under the plastic to kind of get it out of the way there so you can get it to stand up easy or you can have it more open to reveal the clothing underneath because I actually think that kind of looks pretty decent so you can just kind of mess around with the outfit and stuff well, again another reason I hate the fabric material especially on like Star Wars figures because they add way too much material to the figure it's like they kind of overdo it they need to do more form fading stuff but that looks cool there and he comes with some accessories so we get the tuscan cycler so this long rifle here we see him use it in multiple movies especially like phantom Menace when they shoot the pod race and everything so we have this nice gun and they also come with the gaffy stick so the stick that has multiple purposes so i like the brown part here so it has a little bit of texture and stuff there on the handle and it goes down to the big ball with the point onto it so like they can you know obviously use it to like spike somebody i think there's supposed to be even like some poison in this sometimes but like in the mandalorian and we saw him using it to like scrape the teeth of the banthas and everything so that's kind of cool but I always think of like an acorn on the end of it and then the other end to kind of switch this out which we have multiple attachments for it so this one has a nice silver piece here with like a big bludgeon piece or something and then we have two additional attachments to it and we have more like looks to be kind of like an arrow or something and then another spike I think that's supposed to be kind of like axe blades or something not exactly sure 100% but we have those additional attachments that you can pop off but I've already tried to pop it off and it kind of is worrying me that I'm afraid I'm going to break this so we 
probably won't switch them out because I do like just the silver with the dark brown anyway, so I'll leave that on. But there was some posing we can get the Tuscan Raider to be holding the Gaffy stick up and doing its howling, so that is pretty cool there for the Tuscan Raider. And next up, we have the Imperial Death Trooper, which looks pretty awesome here in the all shiny black. And Death Troopers are elite stormtroopers designed for stealth and espionage and tend to serve as bodyguards for Imperial officers. So like when we see them in Rogue One there with Orson Krennic, and so they look awesome. So again, they're just in the all black armor, nice and shiny, look pretty awesome. They're relatively just normal stormtroopers. Obviously, like I said, they are more of an elite version, but the real main difference is that their helmets tend to have like advanced tracking systems in them. So they have like advanced sensors and everything else so that they can be able to track people on the battlefield and everything. So that makes it even cooler since the helmets do look a little bit different. I like how they have the green visors. I don't know if you can see, they look more blue because of probably the background and everything, but they are a green color. So that is awesome. And then have the additional little pieces there on the side of the helmet and everything just looks awesome. But as I mentioned, everything else is pretty much just normal, like Stormtrooper-ish and everything, just in the all black. So it has the black body glove underneath, so you can see all the like rib material and stuff, and then the black armor on the outside. I like how they painted the buckles and stuff silver there. Everything looks just really nice. All sorts of attachments and pockets there around the belt, holster there for the guns, and then the armor just goes all the way down until it has gray shoes there on the feet. So they just look awesome, but these characters to me tend to be long and lanky. They're all, always like more skinnier and stuff compared to other troopers, but I still think they look awesome in the all black. But for his movements, his head can twist all the way around there a little bit stiff and then he can look down and look up. Some okay movements in the neck, but it is a little stiff. The shoulders can come up 90 degrees and we do have this softer armor there so it kind of gets out of the way and it can rotate all the way around. We get the single elbow joint that bends to 90 degrees and it has the rotation and then we get the wrist that can twist around and flex back and forth. Ab crunch and twist right in the middle there of the abdomen so it can rock back and forth just a little bit, but twist side to side mostly. The hips can come up 90 degrees out to the side that far, thigh twist up in there, got a double knee joint that can bend up that far in the back, he can kick his own butt, and then the foot flexes back and forth and can twist side to side. And for accessories, he comes with some weapons. We have the SE-14R Light Blaster, so it's kind of like just a little handgun here. Very unique design, has a little scope on top, a little attachment there in the front, but more or less looks just like a pistol. So we can take and stick this into the weird holster that's just this loop thing. But to get it in, you have to kind of put that little front attachment down in first, and then it just kind of slides all the way in there just like that and just kind of hangs off the side. And then we also get the E11D blaster carbine. So it looks more like the normal stormtrooper gun, but it is a little bit different and has a bit of a different barrel on the front there, but looks pretty awesome. And again, has different attachments, has the butt extended out and everything. So let's go and put this in his hand. So there we got our Imperial Death Trooper all kitted out. And then we also have the original one. So back from probably when Rogue Rogan came out and they do look almost identical. I didn't really notice any differences between the two figures that all come with the same weapon stuff. So not really any difference at all. So it's just another expansion if you missed out on this first First one, but otherwise there's nothing real different between the two. And our next figure is the Imperial Hover Tank Driver. So we see him on Jetta in Rogue One and has relatively the standard Stormtrooper outfit, obviously a little bit different since it is in a tank. It doesn't have to have as much or nice fancy armor or anything, but it does have a little bit of different helmet style. So it has this additional piece on the top. I don't know if that maybe slides down the covered eyes in case there's like an explosion or a big attack on the tank or something. But then it's weird how it always comes down to the front. It's always like they have a smashed down face with the breathers coming down to the front there. But that has the white armor. But of course with this one being on Jetta and stuff, since it's kind of like a dusty place, they are a little bit dirty so have dirtiness right there at the bottom like the chin piece and then all over the front of the armor black body glove underneath and then a belt on with some additional like pocket pieces hanging down and stuff there and then instead of like armor pieces we just have kind of like a looser pants style there on his legs you can see some of the texture in there then has some shin coverings there going up to the knees and then some white boots so for the movements the head can twist all the way around again this one's a little stiff as well and it can look down pretty much as far as the chin contacts with the chest and then up that far as well so pretty good movements in there the shoulders can come up 90 degrees and rotate all the way around we get the single elbow joint that bends to 90 degrees and has the rotation and then we got the wrist that can twist around and flex back and forth ab crunch and twist right in the midsection there so crunch back and forth and can twist side to side hips can come up 90 degrees out to the side of the far we got a thigh twist that twists all the way around a double knee joint that can bend up that far in the back and the foot that flexes back and forth and can twist side to side. So overall, not a bad figure at all. And the only accessory he comes with is the E-11 blaster. So pretty much a standard stormtrooper gun there and a nice metallic dark gray there. And we'll go ahead and pop this into his hand. And just like the last one, we do have the original one as well. And again, don't really see any real differences at all between the two. It just looks like the only main difference is that on the new one, they did make him a little bit more dirty where this one looks like they did have some smudges just a little bit, just in show up as much on the body so I like the new one more just because it's got more of that dirtiness to it but otherwise they are the exact same and the final figure is the shore trooper which I always kind of like so we saw these on Scarif out on the B 
Beach. And so shore troopers are sergeants in command of smaller squads of stormtroopers on coastal and tropical planets. So they have this kind of different armor and come in different colors and stuff depending on the ranks, which we will see. And so I think from like my research, this is like the most basic level one. So this is just the normal look if they are in the shore trooper outfit. And the outfit overall is almost identical to the hover tank trooper. So they're pretty much exactly the same. They just kind of switched up the faces a little bit. So it still has the faces coming down to the front and the shore trooper has like the little breather piece there in the front, but it still has the very similar helmet design overall. The armor is a different color, but everything else is pretty much exactly the same. It does have a little bit of a skirting coming down there at the waist and then it has this additional pocket piece on the front there, which is cool, but it has the same pants design and everything and the boot design. So again, not much difference. They kind of reuse some pieces and stuff going between the two. So it doesn't seem a whole lot of creativity going into changing different people, but it did do enough to make them different. Then he has a white band on the arm and a red section over there on the side. So I definitely think this is overall my favorite one out of the set. It just has a little bit of differentness to us in the color and everything. So that makes it my favorite, but again, not a whole lot really to go off of. And so for his movements, his head can twist all the way around. It can look down and up. So he has a real stiff neck. Again, can barely get it to move, but can rock back and forth there. Shoulders can come in 90, rotate all the way around. We get the single elbow joint with the rotation. Wrist twist around and flex back and forth. Ab crunch and twist in the midsection. Cook and crunch back and forth. This one has definitely some better movements in there and can twist side to side. The hips can come up a little bit there, not fully 90 degrees. It's just a little too stiff. And then out to the side a little, thigh twist all the way around. Double knee joint that can bend up that far in the back. And the foot flexes back and forth and can twist side to side. And also like the hover tank driver, the only weapon he comes with is the E11 blaster as well. It's just this one has some more silver painted onto it in some areas. So that's pretty cool, but we'll pop this in his hand. And as I mentioned, they do have some variants between them, signifying leaders and everything with some color changes. So here is the older figure we have and you can see the color changes there. So this one's more of like a captain or something. He's higher ranked than the short trooper. So you can see he has some of the blue on him and everything. And then they did change the colors and make this one look much more dirtier. So this one does have some weird just browns flex and stuff. So it looks like he's been in mud where this guy looks like he's actually been in some like dirtier areas and everything. So it would be more logical to be on the sand. So you can see they changed some stuff between the two with the colors. And then they changed some where the older one had like the skirty hanging down to the knee where this one just has a little bit down the thigh. So that's really the only difference. Everything else does look exactly the same. So that is all our figures for the Star Wars Black Series Archive Wave 4. Again, not the most exciting wave. I feel it's a little bit boring. If I didn't have a Tusken Raid before, that'd definitely be the favorite from this set. But since I already have them, I've already dealt with them and everything. So nothing real different going on there. So as I mentioned, the figure I like the most out of this set is the Shore Trooper just because it has that little bit differentness to it. But overall, I feel this wave, once again, is kind of boring, which I've been saying for all the archive waves because they're just a lot of repeats, which is what they're supposed to be. But since I've already seen and dealt with these figures before, it kind of makes me a little bit bored of them. But let me know your opinion of the archive wave down in the comments. Did you need any of these figures? So were you excited to get some of this wave? But if you enjoyed my review, please leave a thumbs up on it and hit that subscribe button to see more Star Wars figures. But thank you all for watching. I hope you all stay awesome out there and I'll see you in our next review.